If you forgot a lot of what you learned in Chem 1 and you're now taking Chem 2, this is the right video for you. Most Chem 2 classes will cover the following topics. Some classes will start with what you ended with in Chem 1, while others will jump right into new material like kinetics. The overall chemistry foundations that you need to know are significant figure rules, naming compounds and acids, balancing chemical equations, predicting products, the different types of chemical reactions, and of course, stoichiometry. Besides these chemistry foundations, here are the chemistry 1 topics you will use in chemistry 2. Molarity for two different chapters, solutions and acid-base equilibria, thermochemistry for thermodynamics, redox reactions for electrochemistry, and writing electron configurations for coordination chemistry. Note, not all classes cover coordination chemistry. Chemistry 2 is a bit more math-heavy compared to Chemistry 1. This is why I made specific chemistry notes that lay out the steps to common exam style questions. I especially recommend my kinetics and titration notes. These are the topics that have a good amount of math in them and new concepts. I've written the notes so that they're very thorough and they go over all the different variations of questions you'll possibly see. If you're interested in purchasing my chemistry notes and aren't sure which ones are right for your class, then send me your syllabus. Use the link in the description box and I'll let you know exactly what notes I recommend for you. All right, let's get started with molarity. Specifically, how to find the molarity of a solution. Recall the molarity formula is moles of the solute divided by the liters of the solution. A solute is the substance that is being dissolved. The solvent is the substance that is doing the dissolving, and the solution is the solute plus the solvent. Here's an example of a question you may see in the solutions chapter. It states, what is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 25.2 grams of sodium carbonate in 600 milliliters of solution? We're given the mass of sodium carbonate and the volume of the solution we're asked to find the molarity of the solution. Recall our molarity formula is in moles, not grams, and in liters, not in milliliters. So we will need to convert the grams to moles first, then convert the milliliters to liters. And the last step is to divide the moles and liters together to get the molarity. Let's start with step one. To convert grams to moles, we need to use the molar mass of the compound. So let's find the molar mass by adding up all the individual masses of each element. Sodium has a mass of 23, and there are two sodiums, so two times 23 is 46. There's only one carbon, so that has a mass of 12. Next, there are three oxygens, so 3 times 16 is 48. We'll add all these masses up to get 106 grams per one mole of sodium carbonate. Dividing these values gives us our moles of sodium carbonate. Since this isn't the last step, I will hold off on rounding. Moving on to step two. We'll use either one of these conversion factors from the metric system. I'll use this one. Place the same unit of milliliters across from each other so they can cancel out, and after dividing, we get 0.6 liters. Step three is putting this all together. Dividing the moles we found in step one by the liters we found in step two gives us this value. Last step is to round to the lowest number of sig figs, which is one. Our answer can be written as either 0.4 moles per liter, or just 0.4 capital M. Both units refer to molarity. Here's an example of a question you may see in the acid-base equilibria chapter. In a titration of 35.00 milliliters, 
of 0.737 molar solution of sulfuric acid, how many milliliters of a 0.827 molar solution of potassium hydroxide is required for neutralization? Note, this same question can be rewritten to say how many milliliters of 0.827 molar solution of potassium hydroxide are required to neutralize 35.00 milliliters of 0.737 molar solution of sulfuric acid. We would start with writing a balanced chemical equation, which was one of our chemistry foundations. Then identify what we're given and what we're finding. We are given the volume in milliliters of sulfuric acid, the molarity of sulfuric acid, and the molarity of potassium hydroxide. We're finding the volume in milliliters of potassium hydroxide. Recall that the molarity can be rewritten as moles per liter. These will act as some of our conversion factors. Notice the number given goes with the moles and is set equal to one liter. Since both given molarities are our conversion factors, and conversion factors go in the middle and end of our overall setup, we are left with the 35 milliliters. This is what we will start with. The main idea here is that we are going from milliliters of sulfuric acid to milliliters of potassium hydroxide. Let's make some room for planning this all out. Using the metric system, either this conversion factor or this one, we will convert the given milliliters of sulfuric acid to liters of sulfuric acid. Next, we'll use the given molarity of sulfuric acid to convert the liters of sulfuric acid to moles of sulfuric acid. We now need to change the compound to a completely different compound. We do this by using a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, which is found using the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Next, we'll use the given molarity of potassium hydroxide to go from moles of potassium hydroxide to liters of potassium hydroxide. And the last part is to use the metric system again and convert the liters to milliliters of potassium hydroxide. Let's plug in all of our numbers. Starting with the given 35 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Using the metric system, I'll place the same units of milliliters across from each other so they can cancel and one liter on top. Next, using the molarity of sulfuric acid, we'll place the same units of liters of sulfuric acid across from each other so they can cancel and the moles on top. We'll now change the compound. We need the moles of sulfuric acid on the bottom and the moles of potassium hydroxide on top. Looking at the balanced chemical equation, there are two moles of potassium hydroxide for every one mole of sulfuric acid. Our moles of sulfuric acid cancel out. We can now use the molarity of potassium hydroxide and place the moles across from each other so they can cancel and the liters on top. Next, using the metric system, we'll place the liters on the bottom so they can cancel and the milliliters on top since that's what we're looking for. Multiply the top numbers separately, the bottom numbers separately, then divide to get this value. Last step is to round to the lowest number of sig figs, which is three. Our answer is 62.4 milliliters of potassium hydroxide. If you feel like you need a little bit more practice with molarity, then I recommend watching this video. But if you're good, you're ready to move on to thermochemistry, then click on this next video.